Uh, welcome to the solving right triangle problems lesson today. So when I talk, uh, say right triangle, I, I do mean a right angle triangle, okay? Um, so that's key for um, if you are going to use SOCAR-TOA, okay? So sine, cosine, tangent um, <coughs> ratio equations. So um, I'm going to do a review of um, the stuff that we've covered so far. Like, for example, you should know how to label the sides. Uh, you should know how to... Uh, calculate, you know, so sine, cosine, tangent of some number, you should be able to find the missing sides. Um, and what else, the other thing that we've covered is um, finding the missing angle, okay? Um, and uh, so that now that we've, once you review all of those, we're going to tackle some more problems. So if you feel pretty confident with that, that material, you can jump to the first example down here when I get there. So just kind of read over this table and then move on to the problem. Okay, so we'll start with the first uh, review question here. Um, I want you to label the sides of this right angle triangle. So uh, the first thing that you need to find is where is the important angle um, that you need to stand by. And so hopefully you see that it's right here. Okay, and um, so then you look in, you look through the triangle, and then this is the opposite side. And a lot of you guys have gotten used to like looking for this uh, right angle here and looking across that is always the hypotenuse. And then the remaining side is the adjacent. Okay, so I think we're all there now where we are labeling those sides, okay. All right, uh, then next I want you to get your uh, calculator out, okay, uh, and make sure it's in degree mode. So I have, um, I downloaded a calculator that I, I can use on uh, my desktop here so that you guys can see it visually. Um, if it's something that you guys want as well, I believe that it's like this company Casio is offering a free download that you can use um, for the next few months while everyone's doing remote learning. So, um, But I find that it's, it's almost too powerful that it, it takes a little bit of um, uh, working your way through to find even just this regular screen so you can do simple um, addition, multiplication, just some simple operations because it can do a lot of things like graph and, and so forth. So it's a great calculator, but it's almost like there's too much to it, okay? Um, so anyway, let me know if you want um, instructions on how to download this. So anyway, have your graphing calculator out. Um, I don't even know if it's in degree mode. I don't even know how to get it there. So actually, I probably figured it out. But anyway, I'm just using my regular... Um, calculator on my desk right now and then so if I type in sine of 15 I'm just double checking right now um, no I'm not getting the right answer so let's go and figure this out so I'm looking at this calculator I'm noticing it says rad right there so I'm in radian so I have to get myself out of there so I'm just gonna figure that out okay if you're I don't know using this one um, I figured out okay so I'm just gonna go into setup Okay, so when I go in and to set up, so I hit shift, uh, I'm going to go, like, the angle right now is in radians, so I need to go here and then change it to degrees. So I select degrees, I'm good to go, I'm going to exit out of here, and now it says degrees, okay? So if you type in sine, so let's smooth this up a little bit. If you type in sine 15 on your uh, scientific calculator, your phone, okay, um, so... I just had to make another adjustment here, but if you type in sine of 15, there we go. That's the number that you should be getting on your uh, your calculator. So if it's your phone, if it's your uh, computer calculator, or a scientific calculator, just make sure you're in degrees so that as we go through, you're calculating out the same values as um, I am doing when I'm going through, okay? All right, so uh, we've labeled the different sides, so let's actually go through and calculate the sine of 33. So again, sine 33, uh, I should be getting that value there. So uh, I'm going to round to uh, three decimal places as well. Okay, so you should be getting 0.544639, etc. Uh, you went around to three decimal places. Uh, some of you were having uh, issues with rounding, so I'm just going to review that as well here. Um, so again, three decimal places, this is the spot, this is the number I want to keep, okay, everything left of it I want to keep. Um, this is the first number that you're going to drop off, okay, so that where that arrow is pointing is what's going to decide if you round up or stay the same. 
So since it's a six, okay, so five or greater, you are going to round up. Okay, so you get 0 0.545. Okay, so that four became a five. All right, go to the next one and the next one. Do the same thing. Uh, calculate them out and double check that you're getting the same answer as me. Okay, so again, we've used sine. So now we're going to use tangent 18. Calculate our answer out. Okay, so again, if you drop your calculator, always double check if uh, you are still in degree mode. Okay, so I wrote out a few extra digits here, but again, we need to round to three decimal places, so we need to keep this four, and then we're going to look at the next number. Okay, so it's nine, so that's greater than five, so um, we are going to round up this value to there. Okay, and then we drop off the rest of the values after that. All right, so let's do cosine 25. Okay, and there's our number. Okay, so again, I carried a few extra digits, but I'm figuring out that, all right, I need to keep this number here because that's three decimal places, three after the decimal. And then I'm looking at the first one after that. There we go, it's a three, and it's not five or greater, so we're not going to round um, this uh, number up. Okay, so we're just gonna drop off the, the other number. So we're gonna keep it as 0.906. Okay, and then the 307, etc. will get dropped off. Okay, so move on to, um, so th that's just, uh, you know, crunching the numbers in your calculator. So now we're going to actually get to uh, questions where you're solving um, for the variable. So looking at this first one here, you're noticing that x is divided by 12. Uh, and then uh, it should equal sine 35. So basically we need to solve for x here. So we're going to take... Uh, the 12 since it's divided and move it to the other side okay and since it was divided you're going to multiply it over on that side okay and calculate your answer so go to your calculator and type in so I'll just clear the screen here I go so 12 sine 35 and there's your value. Okay, and uh, there's our number, so, but we would need to solve uh, to one decimal place this time. So again, one after the decimal's right there. And then if you are looking at the next number, it's an eight, so we know we have to round up. Okay, so we'll end up with 6.9. Okay, and hopefully uh, you realize you're finding a side, so if there were units, then you should write units, okay? So otherwise you could just write the generic unit. Units, okay? All right, so go, let's go to the next one. Same thing here. Um, we need to solve for x. Uh, it's a little trickier when you have the x at the bottom. So here it was at the top, so you can just keep the 12. Um, here you can't just chuck the 14 because then the x is still at the bottom of uh, this fraction here. So. Uh, I always tell people to just use this little trick method and just flip them both. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, so then make sure the tangent also flips as well. Okay, so, uh, so we flip them both. Okay, again, if you're doing the same thing to the whole equation, then it's okay to do that. Um, so now uh, we have x at the top. And so uh, what we're going to do is get that 14 that's divided and move it over here and multiply it over on that side. So where you multiply it is where that 1 is at the top. Okay, so we flipped it, we moved the 14 and multiplied it here. So back here, um, everything has a one underneath, so if it's not in a fraction, I can just write a one underneath, right? And that's where, and I flipped it, that's where that one came from. And now we're moving this divide 14 over, and we're multiplying it, we multiply it to the top. Okay, and let's uh, calculate this out now. So we have 14 divided by, I would use brackets, tangent 23. Okay, and what value do I get? You should get 32.90.
Okay, and uh, again, this is a little bit trickier to round up, so you need uh, one decimal place. So you need to keep this nine here, that spot, and then we're looking at the next number here. So we're looking and seeing that eight is greater than five, so we do need to round up the nine, but then you can't write 10. Um, so what you do is then you move over to this next number, and uh, what's the next number after 32? You would write 33. Okay, so you write 33 and then 0, 0.0. I always put that because then, yes, you have one decimal place still. Okay, so it's a tricky one here. When you write at 9 and you have to round up the 9, just move over to the next digit and bump that one up. So we moved uh, 2 up to 3, and now we have 33.0. Okay, and again, I wrote units because I don't know what units the side lengths are. All right, uh, on to the next one here where if I don't give you the equation, you have to set it up and then um, solve for the missing side. Um, so again, uh, what we're doing at the beginning here, uh, label the sides, okay, and then from there you got to figure out what formula that you need. So we'll go through those steps here. So let's just start off with labeling the sides. Okay, so always stand at the important angle, so 48's there, that's the opposite. Okay, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, and then we have the adjacent. Okay. All right, so the next step from there is uh, you have to decide which formula that you need to use. So I'm going to list off Soka Toa here. Okay, so I have Soka Toa listed there. So now I'm going to go through and make a decision as to what formula I should use here. So um, again, we would label our sides. Um, the side that we do have is adjacent, so I'm just going to check off all the adjacents. Okay, uh, opposite. We don't need to find it. We don't have it. Okay, so we're not going to make a check mark. But hypotenuse is the one, yes, we do need to find. So it's important. So check off all the hypotenuse. And you're going to find that, here we go. Oops, the cosine here is the one to use. Okay. Okay, so we've decided that uh, cosine is the right equation here. Um, let's go through and write the formula out. Okay, so again, formulas will always be provided, but you should get them memorized anyway so you can go faster. Um, so from there, uh, you uh, need to fill in the formula. So again, theta is where that's the angle. Okay, adjacent, we do have, it's 10 kilometers, and the hypotenuse is P. Okay. All right, so it's kind of like uh, question B here, where we have um, where we have uh, the uh, the variable at the bottom. So use uh, the steps that you need in order to get the variable out of the bottom. Okay, just adjusting my pen here. Hmm. Anyway, okay. Oops, that's the eraser. Okay, so let's get the P out of the bottom um, by flipping. Okay, so we're going to end up going cosine 48 degrees, and the P goes to the top, the 10 goes to the bottom. Okay, and then a lot easier to move the 10 out of there. There it goes. And when you multiply by 1, you just get 10. Okay, there's your equation set up now. Let's get our calculator. So 10 divided by cosine 10 divided by cosine, it was what, 48? Okay, 48. Okay, and there's your answer. All right, so we get P equals 14. Point nine four four seven. Okay, and then <clears throat> we need to round it up to one decimal place. Okay, so that would mean you need to have this nine. We're going to look at the first number after the nine, and it's not five or greater, so that means we need to just keep it the same. 
Okay, and in this case here, we do actually have units, so kilometers. Let's move on to the next questions here. Uh, so we are trying to find the missing angles now. Um, so again, we you know, found the sides, we found how to calculate the uh, functions, we found out how to find the missing side, and now we're finding the missing angle here. So um, we always had to find something that was missing on this side, but now we actually have that number, we need to figure out what is missing here, that's the angle. Okay, so uh, in order to do that, we need to solve our way out. So we're going to take this cosine and move it there. Okay, so remember the opposite of cosine is the inverse cosine. So that's how we're going to write it here. And we're going to calculate that out. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go to our calculator here. Um, so on your scientific calculator, you should have, right, like where, look for where sine, cosine, tangent is. Um, and then above it, you should have the inverse. So this calculator here has A, S, N. So it just has some um, other is I think they're using it as arc sine arc tan anyway so it, it's the same but yours should be like this negative one that's usually what the other calculators are most of the calculators I saw that you guys were using in class um, if you're using a cell phone uh, remember I think you have to just hit second and then um, the cosine and you get here or it actually might already list this button I can't, can't remember okay so let's go through and calculate that so I'm gonna hit shift cosine to get my inverse cosine here and then I need point Two, three, seven. Okay, and there's the value that you need. Okay, so let's write that in. All right, and if we go back to figure out, okay, solve to the nearest degree, so that just means the nearest whole number. So again, we need to keep that six, look at this number here. And the two is not going to round it up, so we keep it at 76. And then because we're finding an angle, the units are degrees. Okay, so write those in for full communication marks. Okay, uh, let's do the same thing here. Now we have tangent in the middle here. So same thing, I want to solve for B, but right now I have tangent on there, so I'm going to move it over here. And when I do that, I'm going to take tangent, change it to inverse tangent, and write 4 over 8. Okay, so let's go through and try that on our calculator. Um, okay, let's move this over here. So, uh, so we have inverse tangent. Okay, there it is. And then I'm going to put brackets, 4 divided by 8. Brackets. Okay, enter. And that's the number I get. and then round it up properly. Okay, so uh, I need a whole number, so I'm going to look at this number here. It's a 5, okay, so we have to round up, so we get to 27 degrees, okay? So uh, some, a lot of you are still having issues rounding, so just uh, practice those. I don't know, look online for some worksheets to practice. Uh, usually it'll just be like one decimal place, you know, three decimal places around a whole number, okay, but we're all having issues. Um, so just practice that until you're perfect, okay? All right, uh, next one here. Um, so this one takes the most number of steps. If I just give you a picture, can you go through and find angle D? Okay, so usually you have an angle inside, um, but I'm actually telling you angle D is a special angle, so you're going to stand there, label the sides. Okay, and then... Um, so what you could do here with this step here where you list off all the formulas is that you could just kind of think in your head, all right, um, instead of doing this, you could, um, you can go and look at, all right, I have hypotenuse, I have, I have the opposite, which, um, out of the three ratios, which one has that? Oh, sine does. Okay, so you don't have to go through this check mark um, step here, but if you like doing it, then go for it. Okay, all right, hypotenuse, I have hypotenuse, checking those, I have opposite, Checking that, checking it here, but this one got both check marks. So we need to use uh, the sine formula. Okay, um, so from there, 
Okay, let's fill this up, fill the full formula in. So then we get sine. Okay, uh, we don't know the angle, but I'm going to call it D. Oops, that's the angle we need to find. Opposite is 5. You can keep it theta, it's fine. Um, and then hypotenuse is 13. Okay, so we're going to go through the steps that we did with A and B. We're going to move the sine over because we need to solve, find, isolate D. Okay, so the opposite of sine is inverse sine. Okay, so look at that. Inverse sine, so I'm going to go shift sine 5 over 13. Oops, forgot the brackets. Oh, we didn't like that. Okay, try again. See if I can zoom back in here. Bracket 5, good. There you go. Okay, write those in. So 22.61, etc. Eight, and then if you round it to a whole number, you get 23, okay? Because there's a, oops, there's 22, and then the six is what determines if it rounds up or down, and we need to round up, and don't forget your units, degree symbol. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna move on to the actual new stuff now, the word problems. Um, so again, you should have being able to label sides, being able to find the angles, being able to find the sides, the missing sides, and um, be able to just use your calculator and so forth. You're in degree mode. Um, now we can tackle some more problems with all of uh, this information. Okay, so like with any uh, word problems, you should always uh, try to draw a diagram to kind of visualize what it is that you have and what it is that you need to find. Um, and with these problems, you're going to end up drawing some sort of right uh, angle triangle. Um, or you need to get to a right angle triangle because you might start with a triangle then have to find a right angle triangle uh, and then from there you so uh, la Label the sides um, <clears throat> And then go through the steps of okay, I'm going to use soca to us somehow either to find the missing sides or uh, find missing angles Okay, and because there were problems make sure that you write a final statement and um, Yeah, and don't forget the unit. So if it's supposed to be a side length centimeters kilometers millimeters, um, and if it's an angle, don't forget the degree symbol. Okay, so I have the uh, the formulas here. Um, I just want to introduce um, these two concepts, angle of elevation, angle of depression. Um, so basically, I always teach this as, well, say you're standing here. So say you're standing here, and your arm is sticking straight out like that, okay? Where's the rest of your body? So your arm is sticking straight out with the horizontal here. Okay. All right. So if your arm's sticking straight out, and then so you have that horizontal, and then you lift your arm up, okay, then you um, created an angle here. Okay, so you start from a flat line, and then you go up. So when you do that, that angle that you create from a straight line and moving your arm up, that's the angle of elevation. Okay, so um, in these questions today, you may be asked to find that. So you need to know what that means. So again, just think it as your arm is straight out and then you're looking up. Okay, so when you move your arm up from that straight line, that's the angle of elevation. Okay, the same thing applies here with the angle of depression. So same thing, let's say your arm is straight out like this. You have a really long neck this time. Okay, so your arm is straight out like this. So there's that straight line, and then if you drop your arm, okay, that angle that you make with that straight line is the angle of depression. Okay, all right, so let's kind of go through here and try these questions. Um, here is Noah, and he's flying a kite. Okay, so uh, let's just go through and read through it. So he's flying a kite. He's released, uh, let out 25 meters of string. Um, his sister is standing eight meters away. Okay, so eight meters away from Noah. Uh, and she's directly under the kite. What is the angle of elevation of the string to the nearest degree? So I'm going to draw this picture out. So we have Noah here flying a kite. All right, and he's let out some string. Okay, so hopefully, uh, 
um, I, hopefully you've flown a kite before, if not, or seen someone flying a kite. So a kite will be kind of pushed out forward like that. The wind's pushing it, um, and then it's flying. Okay, so it won't be straight up in the air. I got an argument with a student one year here where, no, it should be straight up in the air like this. I'm like, no, no, it's always like this. And uh, his sister, so this is where Noah is. And then his sister is standing <clears throat> eight meters away. Okay, so uh, there's Noah, the sister, <clears throat> and she's directly under, directly under the kite. Okay, and then so let's label some things here. Uh, we know that there's been 25 meters of string. Sorry, my line was a little bit wobbly. It should be nice and straight. Um, and uh, the sister is eight meters away, and but she's directly below the kite. So when you're directly below like that, you will make a right angle here. Okay. Um, and then um, it's asking, what is the angle of elevation? So that's the tricky part. What is the angle of elevation? Okay, so look for where you have the horizontal piece in your diagram. And then when you go up, you're going to make that angle of elevation. So I want to know the angle of elevation of the string. So here's Noah. Here's his horizontal here. Sorry, I don't have my cursor on. Here's Noah. Here's his horizontal here. So from the horizontal, you're going up. Up to the string. So let's try a different color here. Um, so here's so going up to the string. Okay. So when you make that angle there, that's the angle of elevation. So I'm just going to label here. This is the string. Okay. There's the. This is the horizontal here, right? Okay. And then now we just found the angle of elevation. So I'm just going to label that as well, right in here. Okay, so how do I do this without making it messy? Okay, it's gonna go like this. This is the angle of elevation. All right, so uh, these are a relatively um, okay problem. It's, it's just people struggle with just being able to draw the diagram, label things in the right place, and then uh, go through and solve the problem. So uh, just when in doubt, just try to draw something, kind of go through your steps and uh, try to show some work. Um, it's better than just leaving it blank, okay? All right, so uh, from here, so once you have your diagram, I like to draw another one that's just kind of cleaner. Um, so I'll draw one right over here. We'll make it lighter blue. Okay, so uh, we, I'll draw the triangle here. So I, I have my right angle here. Um, I have uh, 8 meters here, and I have 25 meters here. And then what is it that this problem wants us to find? It wants us to find the angle of elevation. So you can call this, I don't know, X. Okay, so that's the angle in there. It's not the side, it's the angle. Okay, so from there, uh, do what you've done before. So whenever you had <clears throat> your triangle, um, and here's the angle and so forth, you would stand here, look in, and then you have the opposite. Um, you have the hypotenuse, and you would have the adjacent. So from there, make a decision. Are you going to use Soka Toa or Toa? Okay, so let's do that. I don't know, like right underneath here. Okay, so again, if you want to save time, just kind of look at what sides you have. Oh, I have adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, so if I have adjacent hypotenuse, which one, like in this formula, in these formulas here, which one has adjacent hypotenuse? Oh, cosine does. Okay, so that's the one you use. Otherwise, if you, um, again, I know the checklist uh, here works great for a lot of you, so you could do that as well. So here we go. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse, adjacent, adjacent, okay. Um, we've decided that cosine works here, so we are going to go through and write that formula out. Okay, so um, just gonna try to give myself more space here. Or, uh, whatever, I'll squeeze it in. Okay, so let's go through cosine of x. So we don't know. I'm trying to find that. Adjacent is eight. Hypotenuse is twenty-five. 
There we go. All right, we're going to boot the cosine over. Okay, again, we can hit inverse, cosine, uh, 8 over 25. Oops, I forgot to do the brackets here. 8 over 25. There we go. etc. All right, so um, I'm looking back up at the question here. I wanted the angle of, I need to find the angle of elevation to the nearest degree. So x here, I'm just going to write it here now. So x needs to be 71 degrees, okay? All right, and now we're going to also um, write our final statement because we have a word problem here. Okay, so the uh, thing we had to find was, okay, so here, to, in order to get full marks for your final statement, you always have to use the keywords. The keyword here is the angle of elevation, so make sure you write that. So the angle of elevation for uh, the string, okay, we were seeing from where Noah's standing at the horizontal, how much the string went up, okay, uh, was 71 degrees. Example two now. So from the top of a cliff above the water, uh, the angle of depression of a boat um, is um, that's on the water is 15 degrees. How far is the boat from the foot of the cliff? Okay, so um, I want you to go through and draw this diagram out first um, so you can visualize. So again, cliff, do you guys know what that is? So just draw a cliff here. And there's some water. Okay, uh, so you are, well, it's the same from the top of the cliff. So say you're hanging out, standing right here. Okay, and from the top of the cliff, that is 108 meters. Uh, the angle of depression. So let's say our eyeball is right here. Okay, that's where our eyeball will be. Let's just say we're laying down on the cliff here. Okay, so that's going to be the horizontal that you have to use as a reference. Okay, so from the top of the cliff, the angle of depression. So from this, from this line here, we need to go down, okay? And that's how we make the angle of depression. Okay, so this isn't a scale, and that should have been straight, sorry. All right, so you are, from the horizontal, your eyeball is, say, right there, you're looking down from the horizontal, okay? So that is the angle of depression right there. Okay, so that's key. You have to uh, get the, uh, the specific angle drawn properly in order for you to keep going with this question. So we're at the top of a cliff. We, um, it's 108 meters above the water, okay? And uh, the angle of depression, so we had to kind of draw that in. So from looking straight across, looking straight across and going down, that's the angle of depression. Um, so the angle of depression of the water on the boat is 15 degrees. So we can write that in here. Squeeze it in, or yeah, squeeze it in right here. Okay, so that angle here, this orange here, um, you, so this orange here, that's the 15 degrees from this dotted line to the green line here. All right, and uh, there's a boat here. Okay, so let's just put our, whoa, okay, let's put our boat here. Okay, sorry, I'll move that green line back. Okay, all right, draw our boat in. Again, that green line should have been straight. Okay, let's put our boat right here. Okay, all right. Um, and um, we want to know how far is the boat from the foot of the cliff. So again, if this, I don't know, cliff had feet, this is where the feet would be. Okay, that's the foot of the cliff. All 
right? And this here is the cliff, right? And this is you, but you're laying down and your eyeball is right there, okay? All right, <clears throat> at the dock. So, um, so again, just to read through the problem, kind of do it over and over again. Uh, so from the top of the cliff, that's 108 meters above the water, uh, we have an angle of depression that is 15 degrees, okay? So looking straight out and then looking down makes the angle of depression. So that right there is 15 degrees. Okay, so the angle of the depression of a boat um, on the water is 15 degrees. So you are looking from here, there's a horizontal, and then you look down at the boat. Okay, so when you did that, that angle is 15 degrees. Okay, and now I want to know um, how far is the boat from the foot of the cliff. So from here to here, that's what we have to find. All right, so now that we kind of have our visual diagram, let's get um, a stripped down diagram here, with just the triangle. Okay, so again, you have a cliff that goes straight up, so you have a right angle here. Um, and then, see this is important here, we have a 15 degree angle right there, okay, but it's not inside, so be careful, it's not, it is not inside of this triangle here, okay, it's on the outside here, okay, so from the horizontal. All right, uh, what else do we know? We know the height of the cliff is 108 meters. And we know that this right here, from the foot of the cliff to um, the foot of the cliff to the where the boat is here, that's what we have to find. Okay, so so again, cliff to boat, right there. Okay, so um, right now, uh, normally what we would do is we would stand at the important angle, but we have one angle, but it's on the outside of the triangle. So we have a situation here where we don't know the angles inside this triangle. But from what you've covered in the past, um, you should know that, so over here as well in this top corner of this triangle, hopefully you see that there is actually 90 degrees here as well. So if you know that this angle here makes a 90 degree angle, what would the angle in here be? Okay. So, um, so let's just, I don't know. Yeah, oh, right. So we're just trying to find this dot right here, this angle in here. Okay, so we know that the angle, the whole angle in that corner is 90 degrees, so we're going to subtract the 15 and we get 75. Okay, and so we can write that in. All right, so. All right, so now we're good to go. We have an actual angle inside of the triangle, um, so we can go through and stand at the important angle. We're looking in. This is the opposite side. That's the hypotenuse, and the, this is the adjacent side. Okay, so if we're going through the steps of figuring what formula we need to use, okay, do this in our head, we're figuring out that uh, we need to find the opposite side, so that's an important side, and we have the adjacent side. Okay, so this is a tangent question that we need to solve. Okay, and um, also make sure that you are writing these formulas out. I'm seeing some people writing like this part here upside down, so the adjacent's at the top and opposite's at the bottom. It is important which way you do write it. Um, I'm also seeing people write tangent and then they're writing the, the sine formula here. So um, again, just take a second to look at the formulas. Um, I have them up here, okay, but you can just have them somewhere on the side, post it up on your desk, your wall, etc. Okay, so from here, uh, now that we know which formula to use, let's plug it in and start calculating here. So the tangent of, well, the angle that we figured out is 75 degrees. The opposite side, well, that's the side we need to find from the boat to the foot of the cliff. And the adjacent side is 108. Okay, and then uh, we need to isolate x, so we are just going to boot this 108 over here. Okay, and calculate that out. So 108 tangent 75. 108 tangent 75. So again, I know that you just did a bunch of um, 
inverse sine, in, right? So just you got to pay attention to what it is you have to find. So here we're finding the side in this word problem. So you should not be using inverse, okay? Whenever you have to go find an angle, you should be using the inverse function. But if you're just finding the sine, you're just using tangent, okay? So just kind of, it's just a way to, for you to check to make sure you're on the right track. Okay, so uh, 108 tangent 75, hit equal, and you get, and you get a really large number. So you, um, so then you have, sometimes people worry, because, you know, we've been calculating little numbers. But if you look at it, what are we doing? We're looking at a word problem with, you know, we're on a cliff, and then the boat's in the water. So if it's 400, does it seem okay? Yeah, it seems okay. Like cliffs 100 meters, right? Um, so uh, x here is 403, and I'm just writing a few extra digits here, and then I'm double checking the word problem to see how many digits I'm supposed to round to. How far is the boat from the foot of cliff to one decimal place? Okay, so that means I'm going to keep this zero spot. I'm going to look at this number and go, oh, you got to round up because it's five or greater. So then you get one. And then I'm also looking for units. So we're looking here. We were working in meters. Okay, and it's a side that I had to find, so it had to be meters. You're not going to put degree here. All right, and to get your last final mark, make sure you write a therefore statement. So what is it that we had to find? What was the key word? Um, how far is the boat from the foot of the cliff? Okay, so the boat is 403.1 meters from the foot of the cliff. Ooh, messy. Okay, all right. So that was a pretty tricky one, but... Um, I think the key here is if um, you, you're just not quite understanding what angle of depression, angle of elevation are. Um, like if you're watching videos online, I think they sometimes um, some other people will use angle of inclination, angle of declination. So decline, incline. Okay. So elevate means to go up, incline means to go up. So sometimes they interchange um, the terminology there. And then depression means to, you know, go down um, or declination is the opposite of incline so they'll use that word as well okay all right so now let's move on to the next example here here's example three um we are just practicing here labeling a triangle um if you were given a question and um then uh, you need to solve it okay so you've seen this before um so if you ever see solve a triangle, right? So remember that means find all the missing angles and sides, right? Okay, so how do we know what's missing? We gotta draw our diagram out. Okay, so we have a um, triangle here. So just um, kind of read through all the instructions here um, before you start drawing it. Um, so you're given that uh, one of the angles is 90 degrees. Okay, so, uh, so right away you're like, okay, that means I have a right angle triangle. Uh, and then we know x, okay, so remember when the le letters were little, let lowercase, that means that it's describing the side. Okay, so we have a couple side lengths here and when in doubt, like you do have meters, so that's how you know it's side length. All right, so let's draw this uh, triangle out. Everyone can draw it slightly different, okay? Slightly different orientation, but the main thing here is that um, you should have a right angle. And then um, it's saying here that X has to be 90, so I'm gonna put capital X, right? Because that's um, the vertex, uh, vertices are always labeled with capital letters. Okay, so remember that from a few units ago. Um, and then it says that this X has to be at 90 degrees, okay? So if you're taking a look um, so the x has to be at 9 degrees. So if you're taking a look at the name, triangle x, y, z, okay, so triangle x, y, z. So it's just a way to label um, <clears throat> the vertices here. So that there's an x, there's a y, and a z. So um, it doesn't matter which way you write it. So you can um, just, um, it's just the x is the, uh, x is the important one that you have to label, okay? Um, so, so from there, what I want you to do is just try to get my cursor back on here. 
Okay, so uh, there it is. Okay, so here's x, then uh, it doesn't matter. So you can make this one y, make this one z. If you do it differently from the way I did it, you still will get, a, get the same answer. Just the important thing is that x is here. Okay, so uh, remember <clears throat> to label the side that's across from the vertex x is baby x, right? Lowercase x, and I know it's hard to um, see if it's lowercase or not, but it should be lowercase. And Z is here. It's 5.2 meters. Okay, and uh, Y, we don't know anything about. Okay, so we'll just put little Y here. All right, so um, you do our diagram. You do your diagram, and um, uh, the instructions are solve for X triangle uh, x, y, z. Okay, so solve the triangle. So that means go find all the missing sides and angles. So, uh, well, what do we need to find? Well, we need to find, we need to find this side, we need to find this angle, and we also need to find this angle. Okay, so um, again, the way you approach, uh, start this question um, will be different from someone else, it doesn't matter. Um, so we did this in the last lesson. Um, I just happened to start with, I'm going to go find uh, side Y first. Okay, but if you wanted to find the angle first, that's fine. Okay, so if you're if you're like, I remember how to do this, I can do the rest, just um, pause the video, go through the question, and or just kind of skip through the video and uh, check the answer. Okay, so I'm going to find side Y. Uh, so what I'm going to use here is I have two sides. Okay, so if I have two sides, I can find the third side in a right angle triangle using Pythagoras. So, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, uh, so I know I, I have x, y, z here. So remember c is the longest side. So here, if we like actually change it to match the letters that are already on our triangle. C is the longest side, so that's always across from the right angle, so that's our letter X. Okay, and A and B, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we could just call it, you know, Y and Z. Okay, so it matches. So you could do it whatever way you want. If you prefer to label it A, B, C, then you could do that as well. Okay, so from there you need to fill in the formula and start calculating the missing side. All right, so y is missing, so I'm going to keep it y squared. Z, we know, is 5.2. Okay, and then don't forget it's z squared. Okay, uh, quite a few of you uh, in your last checkpoint forgot to write the square. Okay, and then x is also squared. So square those and calculate those out. So 5.2 squared is the same as going 5.2 times 5.2. Okay, so you get 27.04. Okay, and y squared, which is still being carried along. And then 7.8 squared is the same as 7.8 times 7.8. So then you get there. All right, and now we're going to solve for y. So boot that across. get 33.8 okay and now remember we're going to isolate y so we still have the square on here so let's put the square and the opposite of uh, squaring is square root and then because we're in grade 10 we're going to do plus and minus okay but in this case here we can't have a negative side so we're just going to take the positive root Okay, so you get 5.81, and remember how I showed you guys last time, make sure you carry some extra digits here, okay? All right, uh, and then that's also a side length, so I'm just going to put my unit on right now, so I'll remember to write it later. Okay, so I know that it says, or actually doesn't even say what to write it to, so I, I guess you're, yeah, you can do whatever here. Um, I'm going to carry some extra digits anyway until the end. All right, so we found our side y, so now we need to go find an angle, okay, that's missing. 
Um, so it doesn't matter what, where you want to start. I, I guess I'll start with uh, finding angle y. Okay, so if I'm going to do that, I need to stand at angle y. Okay, so I'm standing at angle y right there, happy face, and then we're looking through. This is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and that's the hypotenuse. Okay, all right, so now that we are labeled, we need to figure out what formula we need to use here in order to find our angle y. Okay, so we have um, the opposite, okay, the opposite angle is what we need to find, right? Oops, sorry, sorry, the opposite, ignore that. Um, so you need to find the, um, um, the, uh, so you have the adjacent side, sorry, you have the adjacent side, adjacent side, and then you have the hypotenuse. Okay, so you need to use cosine here. Okay, so uh, what's the angle? Well, we don't know, so we're going to call it y. Uh, what's the adjacent side? 5.2, and the hypotenuse is 7.8. Okay, so in order to find our angle, we're going to boot the cosine over. Okay, and then calculate this value out. Okay, so I get 48. Okay, so same thing, I'm just carrying a bunch of digits here and um, I have an angle so my unit should be degrees. Okay, so I'll round it up in a bit. All right, um, so we found our angle, angle Y, and again, once you find stuff, you can kind of put it into the diagram. So that one's 48.19 etc. Uh, we found our, our side here, it was 5.81. Okay, meters. Um, so uh, that leaves us with this uh, last angle here. Okay, so again, I could go use cosine, uh, cosine tangent and so forth to find angles because that's a way to find angles. But um, if you can save some time, use a tool that you already learned a few years back where, well, what do angles in a triangle add up to? They add up to 180. So if you're trying to find Z here, angle Z, all you're going to do is take 180, you're going to subtract the 90 that's already in there, you're going to subtract the angle that you just found, angle Y, uh, carry a few more digits though, and Get your final answer. Okay, something like that. And there's your angle. Okay, so this would have been angle Y here, angle Z here. All right, so I didn't specify um, what to round to. So uh, when in doubt, you can kind of look at the numbers here and go see how it's like one decimal place. Okay, um, that's kind of a way uh, you can use it, or like I know for the, yeah. So yeah, just. A couple of digits is fine. So here I'm going to change this to uh, y equals 5.8 meters. Okay, uh, angle y will be let's go round it to a whole number. Okay, and angle z is 49 degrees. Okay, all right. So therefore, the angles. Okay, uh, the Side y is 5.8 meters long, and angles y, angle y is 48 degrees, and angle z is 49 degrees. Okay.
good job. All right, so uh, again, that's just kind of a nice review of um, what we already did before, but if you just needed to see another one, then um, it's good. Uh, so again, um, I think last time I did give you a picture of the triangle, so this one's a little harder in the sense that you had to um, draw it from scratch, okay? So again, you know how to label triangles uh, with the corners, the vertex, vertices now. You know that the little, the sides are the little angles, so um, this is the key thing here was to actually set up the diagram again properly so that you can kind of go through uh, your one page of solutions here, okay? Okay, uh, uh, on to the last example here. Uh, so, or no, I don't think it's the last one. I think we got two more. Okay, um, so what you're doing here is, um, again, reading through the question, making a diagram, that's key, okay? Uh, and then from there, uh, going through and solving it. So if we have a, um, a group of students, they're on a field trip here, and, um, okay, so they have a campsite that they're at, but then they travel 240 meters um, to reach a checkpoint. So again, if you're, uh, just think of it as like you're, I don't know, you're at a camp and then you have to go somewhere and then check in somewhere and then move, go to somewhere else, check in and then go back home. Okay, that's what they're doing here. So they're at a campsite, they travel 240 meters and they get to their first checkpoint. Then they turn, they turn and creating a 42 degree angle from their previous path, okay? and then they travel another 180 meters to get to their second checkpoint. Then they turn again and travel the shortest uh, possible path back to their campfire, okay? So they're not gonna go like sideways and left and right and just go straight back to their camp. All right, so uh, in the end, we need to find the area um, of, of this triangle, okay? All right, so let's start with our diagram here. So um, just, we have a campsite, okay? So here's a campsite. Okay, so we don't have a lot of information like what direction things are and so forth. So just start somewhere, okay, make a dot for campsite. All right, they're just traveling. Okay, so they travel 200, this isn't going to be to scale. Uh, they travel 240 meters and here's their first checkpoint. Okay, so, um, and then from there, they're going to turn at uh, creating a 40 degree 42 degree angle. So they're going to turn. So if you ended up drawing this up this way, that's fine. That's a, that that's that works. Um, I don't have space to draw it that way, so I'm going to go this way. Okay. So that so they turned and went this way. So that angle that they created is 42 degrees. Okay. Um, so from there, they traveled 180 meters to the next checkpoint. Okay, and then um, so once they're and then they're going back to their campsite. Okay, all right. So I drew it in a way that it was a right angle. So I'm gonna just change it so it doesn't look that way. All right. Okay, so. That's their second checkpoint there. Okay, um, so from there, you need to figure out the area that this triangle made. Okay, um, so the reason why I purposely didn't draw it as a right angle triangle is because I didn't want you to assume, oh, it's a right angle triangle, so it's going to work. So we don't know. Um, yeah, we're not, it doesn't specify if it, there is a 90 degree um, in this corner here. So we, ca we can't make that assumption here. Okay, so we just know that um, they travel back this way. We know the angle here. We know the sides and so forth, okay? Um, so with what you've covered so far, you know that Soka Toa can help you find the angle. Uh, it can help you find a side length. Um, but in this case here, the question is not even asking for a side length or an angle. It's asking for um, what's the area of the triangle, okay? of this root, like, so this root became a triangle, what's the um, area of this triangle, okay? So, um, so for thinking, brainstorming here, uh, what's, how do we find the area of a triangle in general? So we're going to take the base times the height of the triangle and divide by two, okay? So if we can find the base, so like this could be the, 
this could be the base or that could be the base, okay? Um, and, um, and then we need to find the height, okay? So um, I'm just gonna draw one this way just because there's Bit more space here okay so that's the height so a height is always straight straight up so at a 90 degree angle okay all right so there's the height so if we can figure out the height then I have the this would be the base here okay and then um, um, yeah and then we could find the area so um, if you do it this way it'll work as well okay so um, for now, uh, so how do we go about finding the height here? So the height, when we drew it in, it actually does draw or create a 90 degree angle. So now we do have a right angle triangle in here. So now we could use Sokatoa, okay? But before when it was um, a triangle and we weren't sure what kind of triangle it was, we couldn't use Sokatoa. Okay, so let's just draw this triangle separately. Okay, so our goal right now is to find height. Okay, so I'm just going to draw this triangle out. Okay, um, I'm drawing the one that's on the right side because I have an angle in there. Um, I also have this side length. Okay, so where this side I don't have an angle. All right, so we know that this angle in here is 42 degrees. Uh, we know that this length is 180 meters. Okay, so our goal is to find H. All right, so do the usual label your sides and decide what formula you need. Okay, so I'm seeing here I have a hypotenuse and I have an opposite. So that's the sine formula. Okay, so the sine of 42 degrees Opposite is the height. The hypotenuse is 180. And uh, we're going to go through and find the height here. So we're going to boot that 180 over there. So 180 times sine of 42 equals the height. Okay, so, and it would be meters. So again, I'm taking a, a few extra digits because if I need to use this value, H, uh, in the calculations, then I don't want to round early because it, it can affect how accurate the answer is, okay? All right, so I'm looking, uh, I have found my height, so now I can go to the next step. I found H, now I'm going to go find the area. Okay, all right, so here's my formula, base times height divided by 2. So my base, okay, so the way I drew my diagram here, remember the base is going to be here, and then this is the height. So my base is 240. And my height, carrying all the digits, or some extra digits here. And again, um, if you're trying to figure out how many extra digits to carry, um, just kind of look at the word problem um, and see, okay, see how it says round to the nearest meter, so it wants a whole number. So, you know, carrying about four digits, that's fine. Okay, so from there, multiply these values, divide by two, and then you get okay, uh, and then because it's area, meter squared, right? So m times m, meter squared, um, and then round to the nearest meter, so we're going to round, keep that number, look here, All right? So we don't need to round up, so up to there, and then write our therefore statement. Okay, so the area of therefore Okay, 
this is the area that um, <clears throat> that was created by when they walked on this triangular path here um, was uh, <clears throat> 14,453 meters squared. Okay, so again, if you did work ahead and you ended up making a diagram, um, so like if your big triangle was like this, and then you ended up making, um, see if I would label these, if you ended up making, oops, um, the height go this way, like that, it would still would have worked, okay? So you would have still calculated out to the same value. All right, um, now we'll move on to the last one. On to the last example here. So um, again, hopefully you're getting really confident with using your, uh, your trig ratios in order to um, solve different applications and so forth. Okay, um, if, uh, okay, so we have Lyle here. He's the L in this problem. Here's Lyle right here. All right, he's standing there. Um, he's actually on a road here. Um, he's 200 meters away. So if you're looking here, from Lyle to this uh, tower here. He's 200 meters away from the tower. Um, and uh, so he reasoned that he can calculate the height of the tower by measuring the angle um, uh, to the top of the tower, okay? Um, and the angle uh, from the base to the water. So basically he measured, so again, from the horizontal, the roadway, he measured from the roadway up, when he was looking with this eye to the top of the tower, 37 degrees, and then again, there's um, equipment that you can do that with, okay? Uh, and then he had a roadway here and he measured down to the water and that was 21 degrees. So what he did here was it's the angle of elevation and angle of depression. And uh, so now you have to calculate the height of this tower, okay? So I'm gonna give you a clue here. You should go find A first and then you should go find B. So uh, Lyle's standing here just recap everything, okay, he's 200 meters away from this tower here, uh, the angle of elevation, so he went and looked straight at the tower and then up 37 degrees, straight at the tower and down 21 degrees, he used some special equipment that you can do to uh, find the angle of elevation and depression, and um, we need to calculate how tall this tower is, okay, so the clue here is find A first and then find B. So let's, as usual, draw uh, these as separate um, triangles with uh, less information on them. Okay, so the one at the top here, um, okay, there we go. All right, so we have triangle here, so the tower is straight up and down. Oops, okay, so we have Lyle standing here, okay, so we have a 200 meter and uh, this is A, so again, my triangle's a bit wonky here, but and now we know 37 degrees. Okay, all right, and I'm gonna draw the other triangle. Okay, and we know this is a right angle here, this is B. And we know that this angle in here is 21 degrees. And uh, we know this, he's 200 meters away. Okay, so we drew the triangle separately, so now we can work through. So hopefully you can see here, just setting it up was the tricky part. Um, even if I didn't give you that diagram here on the right or left here, uh, hopefully you could actually go through and draw this out the, the next time you see a question like this. So uh, in this case here, we have to do a couple different calculations, um, and then in the end, we're going to total up A and B, okay? And that'll be our uh, final answer. All right, so let's start with finding A first. Okay, so uh, again, if you're... Um, you can specify just so that you keep reminding yourself what you're supposed to be finding. Okay, so you're finding a side here, side A. All right, so uh, you're going to go and stand where Lyle's standing, and he is looking in, and this would be the opposite side of the triangle. Uh, this would be the adjacent side, 
and this is the hypotenuse side. Okay, all right, so from there, um, you're trying to figure out what formula to use. So you have opposite that you need to find, and you have an adjacent value. So that's tangent. So again, another reminder, please write the formula correctly. Okay, so the angle is 37 degrees, the opposite side is A, and the adjacent is 200. Okay, so uh, we need to solve for A, so we're going to put the 200 over here. And we'll calculate our A. Okay, and I'm just carrying all my digits for now uh, because this is not my final answer. Okay, so, and I know it's a length, so it's meters. Okay, so, so far we've found then the length of the part, part of the tower, that's A. Okay, and then again, if you're kind of trying to uh, figure out if you're in the, uh, if it's reasonable, remember where Lyle's standing to looking at the tower, that's 200, so um, I know diagrams aren't always to scale, but 150, okay, it seems like it might be an all right number, like versus if you just had 15 or 1.5 meters or if you had a million uh, meters, okay, so um, that's just, you know that you're uh, found something reasonable. Okay, so let's find uh, the answer for the other triangle now, so side B. Okay, so same thing, go through, stand where Lyle's standing, look in, that's the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so again, it's opposite and adjacent again, so we need another tangent uh, equation here. Okay, so we have uh, the new angle here. He measured when he looked straight and then looked down. The angle of depression was 21 degrees. The opposite side is uh, B. We don't know it. That's what we're trying to find. And the adjacent side is 200. All right, so again, just put that 200 over. And so you're multiplying it to tangent 21. Okay, and when we get to there, we get 76.77, etc. Okay, etc. So, uh, so now what you're going to do is you're going to find the um, the length of the tower here. So find A plus B, okay, which is the height of the tower. Okay, so here, here's my A and B. I'm just going to add them together. I'll just write them really quickly here so that if you're just scanning the notes, you don't know where I got these numbers from. Okay, they're not going to all fit, so I'll just... Okay, and I used all the digits though, and then I got 227, 4, 8, 3, 6, etc. All right, and now I can look and see what I had to round to. Uh, calculate the height. Calculate the height of the tower from the base um, at the water level. Okay. All the way to the top uh, to the nearest meter so we need a whole number here so I need to keep the seven I need to look here it's four so we're not going to round up we're just going to keep it 227 and the units are meters okay so therefore statement the height Okay, the height of the tower is 227 meters. All right, so that takes us to the toughest uh, trig uh, problem, but hopefully um, now that you're really confident with using all the different trig tools, um, something like this uh, it should be straightforward. Again, the toughest part is getting a diagram drawn so you can visualize it. You need to understand angle 
uh, elevation angle depression in order to figure out what it is you're supposed to draw. Um, again, sometimes you need to find some other things and so you have to add additional pieces to find a right triangle. Um, and then sometimes you have to yeah draw a triangle from scratch given some information and and so forth okay so just uh, just make sure practice these um, there's some textbook questions here right at the bottom if not I'll, I'll add oh yeah there they are okay and then check your answers in the back always check them okay all right and then try the checkpoint <laughs>